ಅಪ್ಯಂತುಮಂಗಾ ಭಕ್ತ್ರಾಣಸ್ಯಕ್ಷುಶ್ರೌತ್ರಮತು ಬಲಮಿಂದ್ರಿಯಾನಿ ಚರ್ವಾ ಸರ್ವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೋಪನಿಷ ಮಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕುರ ಮಾಮಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕರು ಅನಿರಾಕರ ನಮಸ್ತು ಅನಿರಾಕರ ನಮ್ಮೇಸ್ತು ತದಾತ್ಮನಿ ನಿರತೈಯುಪನಿಷತ್ಸು ಧರ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಮೈ ಸಂತು ತೆ ಮೈ ಸಂತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮೇ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಜ್ ಅಪನ್ ಮೈ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಮೈ ಬ್ರೆತ್ ಮೈ ಐಸ್ ಮೈ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ may all my senses wax clear and strong may brahman show himself unto me may i never deny brahman nor brahman me i with him and he with me may we abide always together may there be revealed to me who am devoted to brahman the holy truth of the upanishads om peace 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 be unto all this morning our subject is brahmananda as we saw him we are observing his birthday anniversary his actual birthday will be on coming wednesday 6th shami brahmananda is my guru's guru my guru was his private secretary shami brahmananda jayajin 1922 my guru jayajin 1962 long ago brahmananda was born in january 1863 at shikrakulin gram 30 40 miles north east of calcutta city his father was a very rich landlord and his mother died when he was very young so his father married again so he went to village school there was no high school there when he finished his village school he came to Calcutta for higher education, high school. But he was not interested for studying anything. He used to go to school, but he was practicing spiritual disciplines in this early age. Meditation, prayer. So he went to gym. And there he met Swami Vivekananda, who was the main disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. They became very close friends. Vivekananda was only 10 days older than him. Seeing that he was not interested in education, so his grandfather, where he was staying, asked his father to arrange his marriage. So he was 18 years old, got married, a girl who was 11 years old. At that time, child marriage was very common in India. And his brother-in-law was a devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, Manamohan Mitra. So the newly married couple came to pay respect to their guru, Sri Ramakrishna. Seeing him, Sri Ramakrishna asked him, what is your name? My name is Rakhal. Rakhal means cowherd boy, who was a companion of, Sri, of Krishna in previous incarnation. Rakhal. That is a wonderful name. What happened? Some days before Sri Ramakrishna had a vision, 
he saw a little boy dancing with Krishna on a lotus on the Ganges. Why I have this vision? He was thinking. He prayed to the Divine Mother, I am tired of talking about worldly things with these worldly people. Lord, please bring a person with whom I can talk only about God. I'm disgusted with talking with worldly things. So in that, then the Divine Mother showed him the little boy, and then he realized that boy would be his spiritual companion. That with whom he can talk about God. So Sri Ramakrishna asked him, visit me again, again. He started to visit quite often and began to stay in Dakshineshwar with the Guru. The family did not object because the girl was 11 years old, so let him stay with his Guru. They did not object. Slowly, Sri Ramakrishna began to train him. Sri Ramakrishna's training is very important. Very important. We taught him how to meditate, how to start, read others' mind, and many practical things. One day, Sri Ramakrishna, in the breakfast, some butter and some candy came. So he ate. It is a Krishna prasad. Sri Ramakrishna said, my goodness, without giving me first you yet, it is greed. It is not good. He was a little upset, a young boy, coming from a very rich family. He ran away. He thought, I shall not stay with this person. He went near the temple gate, and he could not move farther. He collapsed. Then he came back, Sri Ramakrishna said, could you go? I put a demarcation line there so that you can go farther. You can't go farther. So he came back. And he was complaining, I am passing through a dry spell. I shall go back home. Sri Ramakrishna did not say him anything. You see, in the spiritual life, always remember, it goes ups and downs. The day your mind is full of shatta guna, you will get good meditation. It depends upon the mind. The day your mind is low, medium, upper, that is the mind fluctuates. So he was trying to go away from his guru. So it was very it was their routine that morning and evening you shall go and meditate. So he went for meditation in the Nath Mandir in front of the Kali temple of Dakshineshwar. And Sri Ramakrishna went inside the temple. And then he, pre he just visited the Divine Mother, then came back to his room. And he, before he came back, he saw Swami Brahmananda was in his room. What is the matter? You did not go for meditation today? Master, I went, but something happened. What happened? I saw a flood of light was coming from the image of the Divine Mother and overwhelmed me. I could not bear that light. I could not bear that experience. Sri Ramakrishna said, well, you are complaining that you are not getting any kind of experience. Now you say you cannot bear that experience. What can I do? Go on. Keep on. Say so another J.C. Ramakrishna said, give me a little massage to my feet. He was coming from a rich family. Sir, I cannot do those kind of things. I'm a holy man. I'm asking him to give a little personal service. So he yielded, he was massaging, 
it was evening. And Sri Ramakrishna's room on his bed, massaging. All of a sudden, he saw an eight years old girl with red bordered cloth entered the room and encircled the Sri Ramakrishna's bed a few times, then merged with the master. He saw that little girl and disappeared. It was the Divine Mother. So Sri Ramakrishna, he was, a, then Sri Ramakrishna said, did you get the result of serving a holy man? He was trying to give a spiritual experience to this young man. In future, she, he would be the head of the Ramakrishna order. I'm just telling you, training. One day, Brahmananda, on his way in Calcutta, found a rupee, I think in a car. On the, so he picked it up and gave to a beggar. And when he came back, he told that thing to Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna said, my goodness, why did you charge the money? Sir, I took it and gave it away to a beggar. I did not take it. No. You should not touch money. Do you know what words he used? To match khabina, match her bazaar jabi kano. If you do not want to eat fish, why will you go to the fish market? You must have some secret desire. You see, these great teachers can uproot your worldly desires from the mind. He can change your mind at any time by touch, by a glance. He was training this young person. One day, Sri Ramakrishna told the devotee, Jodhu I shall come and see you today. And many visitors came. Sri Ramakrishna forgot. Before midnight, he remembered that I gave words to that Jodhu Mallik that he would, I would go and see him. Immediately he asked Rakhal, like the, like the hurricane launcher, let us go. That, of course, that place is not very far, it is outside the temple garden. So he came, went to the main gate and went to his gate, found the gate was closed. He called a few times, nobody replied. Then he pushed the gate and put one leg inside the gate and said, Jodhu, here I came. He was teaching this disciple, you must be truthful. You must not deviate from the truth. God is truth. How Sri Ramakrishna trained? Well, that penetrated inside me forever. One day, Brahmananda came from Rakhal came from Calcutta. Sri Ramakrishna said, "You know, I see a cloud on your face. I cannot see your face distinctly. Some haze, some mist on your face. I cannot see your eyes. What is the matter? Tell me, did you do anything wrong?" No, Master, I did not do anything wrong. So wrong means he understood that whether you did, you did you commit any adultery or did you steal anything, that he understood. Wrong means that. Sri Ramakrishna said, no, there is something wrong. I cannot see you. Did you tell a lie? Then he remembered while chatting with his friends, he said something which was not true. Well, yes, Master, I when I was talking to my friend, I said this which was not true. That is the reason I cannot see your eyes. God is truth. Always speak the truth. Be perfect. Christ says, be perfect, as the Father in heaven is perfect. So maybe we can define religion. Religion is the manifestation of perfection, already in human beings. Religion is the manifestation of divinity, already in human beings. That is the way we can define religion. 
perfection. In this materialistic world or in the domain of dualism or maya, nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. We are not perfect. Even the saints are not perfect. We are struggling for perfection. Real perfection is only in Brahman, in God. God is perfect. But as I remember, I, I told a funny story about perfection. A pastor in a village came to the congregation and asked, only God is perfect, you people are all sinners. He was pounding, Christian minister. Then you know what happened. He said, is there anybody in this congregation perfect? Raise your hand. Nobody raised the hand. <coughs> Have you seen anybody perfect? Raise your hand. Nobody raised the hand. Have you heard anybody is perfect? Raise your hand. So one man in the back pew raised the hand. Are you perfect? No, sir. Have you seen anybody perfect? No, sir. Have you heard anybody perfect? Yes, sir. Who is he? My wife's first husband. <laughs> My wife's first husband is ever perfect, you see. <laughs> that is a funny joke I heard. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> Religion, we, we learned we, he was extremely careful to make the monks perfect. I remember Sat Prakashananda told one story. <clears throat> the person who founded this century in 1938. He was a disciple of Swami Brahmananda. Maharaj used to tell monks, go, peel the potatoes and bring to me. So the monks will go and peel the potato and bring peel and potato both to him. Seeing the one potato said, only this person is getting good meditation. How do you know? The way he peeled, you see, it, we, we do not have peeler like America, like you in this way, you peel the potato, which is a bochi, some kind of so cutting, seeing, so slowly taking the potato, you will have to peel like this. So he took very thin layer of skin from the potato, very, with full concentration, concentration and very carefully. There is no too much flesh in the skin. So this person gets the good meditation. How they used to train in the monastery. Sri Ramakrishna's disciples I'm talking about. So quality, not quantity. And contribution, what will you contribute to your order, monastic order? You say there is a great saying of Kennedy, ask not what your country offer do, do, do for you, but what you can do for your country. That is a great, great line of Kennedy. In this world, take the position of a giver, not taker. So Sri Ramakrishna died in 1886. The disciples established a monastery in Baranagar in October 1886, very poor. <clears throat> they began to travel all over India, practicing austerity. Oof, those days are very, when we read those stories, we feel very sadness inside. He was coming from a rich family. He went to Ajodha, the birthplace of Rama. That area was going through famine. And Indian monks do not cook. They go and bake food from door to door. So they, they, they could not get much food, only got some kochu boiled kochu, 
I don't know. Perhaps you can go to the Indian store, you can find that kuchu. A kind of roots which grow inside, the, under the ground. You boil it, and then you eat it. But there are two kinds. One is very good, another has, is poisonous. So he got something, it immediately his mouth swelled. And saliva was coming. And very painful, poisonous one. Then he was complaining to Sri Ramakrishna, Master, you made me monk, coming from a very rich family. Look, you could not afford, provide me any food. Tomorrow morning, if I get some khichudi, rice and lentil, some kind of food, and some pickles, then I shall understand that you exist. The disciple is testing the existence of his guru, who passed away in 1886. What happened? In the morning, Swami, I think who else was there? Swami Brahmananda, Paturyananda, both came to take bath in the Saroju River. I remember I went there also in 1970 and took bath in that river. Anyhow, so after taking bath, when they came out, then I found that a man came with some food and looking for some monks. Seeing these two monks with ochre cloth, they came and brought food. Then Swami asked, who are you? We do not know you. Then he told his story. I'm a confectioner. I make sweets, food, and I sell. I have a shop. So I was sleeping, and Lord Rama appeared before me and said, hi, there are two monks are at the, on the bank of the Saruji River. You go and feed them. I thought it is a dream. I just turned my side and tried to sleep. Again, Lord Rama came and said, what? You won't obey me? Your whole shop will be burned into ashes. Go right now and carry food to those monks and feed them. So immediately he took his food, khichdi and some pickles and came to this Swami Brahmananda, Swami Turiyananda and gave them, sir, this food for you. Then he told his story. Then immediately Brahmananda realized that yesterday I complained to Sri Ramakrishna that if I do not get food, I thought you do not exist. So Mother Master exists. And that man also said, by your grace, I had the vision of Lord Rama. What a wonderful story. Then they went to Vrindavan to practice, for practicing austerity. There was a place called Kusum Sarovar. From Vrindavan, you to, if you go to Sam Kunja or Radha Kunja on the way. That lake and the palace belong to a king, Bharatpur, of Raja of Bharatpur. So these two monks are staying in a, in a small cottage on the bank of that, on the, by the side of that cottage, of that lake. I went there several times. That cottage still exists. It is a brick building. And the Queen sent some sweets to these Motu monks, Shami Brahmananda and Shami Turiyananda. He heard, she, she heard that these two great monks are living in her place. So she sent a lot of sweets and food. So Shami Brahmananda broke one sweet and found a gold coin. The queen sent all this money to Gold to these monks. The moment he saw it, he closed it and told Shami Turiyananda, we must leave this place right now. The queen is trying to tempt us. We shall not just stay here. So they left. How they are trained by Sri Ramakrishna. <laughs> Another story he told, I love that story. Never 
underestimate or disrespectful to a human being. Always you must pay respect. He told the story and to the monks. Once there was a big forest fire and all the wild animals were coming out of the forest. And there is a branch of a tree in that branch, a lie, there is a there is a nest of the small ants, red ants, small ants in a nest. So these ants told the elephant, hello, friend, please save us. We'll be burned into ashes, the forest fire. You break the branch of the tree with your tusk, or tusk or, or your that head of that extension, that elephant, you know. So you break it and carry it outside the forest so that we will be saved. And that elephant broke it and threw them outside the forest. Thus their lives are saved. Time goes by. One day they found that elephant was lying down and suffering and his nose was bleeding. This ant said, hey, he, he is our friend. He saved our lives. We must check what is wrong. They found some kind of bumblebee or something entered into the nostril of the elephant and was biting and killing, trying to kill him. So these ants made the procession, went through the nose and killed that bumblebee and saved the life of the elephant. That story Swami said, never, never, you know, if a human being comes, do not underestimate him or make, make him too little. You do not know who will help you in your life. All this mutual respect is extremely important. Not only in monastic life, in family life, everywhere. That is the way he used to train the monks. <coughs> he was a shod guru, a real guru. There are many kinds of guru. Professional guru, commercial guru, and real guru. Who is real guru? Shrutriyo, Abhrijino, Akamahato, Satya Kama, Satya Shankalpo. That person knows what he is teaching. He knows the external and internal meaning of the scriptures. His character must be good, pure character. An impure person cannot transmit his spirituality. Akamahato, desireless. He will not seek anything from you in exchange of his teachings. A man of love, a man of the God, a man of truth. That is the way Shankara defined a real guru. In the monastery, one monk, young monk, was very hot-tempered. He could not get along the people. But very good worker. But temper is bad. Fight, quarrel with others. Then one day, Swami Premananda, who was the manager, he took this boy and to Brahmananda. Maharaj, this boy is creating so much commotion in the monastery. Please put your hand on his head and bless him. Maharaj said, my hand is not good today. You put your hand on his head. No, Maharaj, you will have to put your hand. So Swami Premananda grabbed Maharaj's hand and put on his head. And that magic touch, that boy's life was saved, was transformed. Then Premananda said, Maharaj, now put your hand on my head. <laughs> so Premananda put him on his head. Then he was so excited, he called all monks, take his blessings, now he is in a great mood. So all monks came, he was touching one after another. Finally one man came, he was a devotee. When he came, Brahmananda got up. Maharaj, touch him. No. Jo aya, o chalagya. The power which came inside me, that power now left me. I cannot touch anymore. Real Guru. 
He can change your life by touch, by glance. Sometimes through silence. Swami Nirbhanananda told us this story. He was a Swami Brahmananda's attendant. Every evening after our meditation, we used to go to his room to listen to all these old stories of the olden days. He said, once a young woman came to Swami Brahmananda when Maharaj went to bed after lunch for rest. The Maharaj is resting, but no, I must see him. That girl came. He was called 15, 16 years old. Why do you want to see him? I want to see him, only I shall tell him. What happened? The story is that girl was married when he was 14, and within two weeks her husband died. And according to Hindu system, you cannot marry again. You will be a widow forever. So he was crying. Sri Ramakrishna appeared before her and said, don't cry. My spiritual son lives in Bagbazar, Calcutta, in North Calcutta. You go and see him. So this girl, Dinan Jojajan, or Ram Bagbazar, and this and that. So he came, she came from, from Murshidabad to Calcutta, and with his brother came to Udbodhan and met Sharadananda. Sharadananda said, Brahmananda lives in Balaram Mandir, you go to him. So she came. So Swami Nirbhanananda reported to Brahmananda Maharaj, a girl has come, wants to see him, see you. Bring her here. Went, closed the door. She told her whole story and crying. Brahmananda immediately initiated her. Nearly two years, two hours, he has spent, she has spent with her. Then he called his attention. She did not eat anything. Please arrange some food for her. Later, later on, that girl started a convent and became a great leader. Sri Ram Swami Brahmananda changed her whole life. Girish Chandra Ghosh, the actor and dramatist, a bohemian devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, was passing through a dry spell. One day, Brahmananda went to him and said, what is the matter? How are you? I am in a mess. I am thinking my guru is a human being, but actually he is God, Sri Ramakrishna. I engaged somebody to read Gita Chonji to me, but my mind is in a very low level. Brahmananda said, don't worry, it comes and goes. Your mind will rise very soon. Then he left. Immediately his mind went up. But look, he has tremendous power. He can raise anybody's mind. Sometimes in Calcutta, some girls, those who are actresses, they used to come to Shami Brahmananda. One girl's name was Tara. I met her daughter in 1982 in Bhuvaneshwar. She was an actress. Brahmananda initiated her. And she built a house near monastery in, in Bhuvaneshwar. Her whole life was changed. I wrote a long, many stories about her in, in Girish's book. <laughs> Putit Pamun, savior of the fallen, that is the word. One little young boy used to come to Brahman, though he had some moral lapses, and she was very, he was very shy to visit Manar Maharaj. <laughs> so one Noon time, Maharaj, he was thinking but Maharaj was resting. He was abiding Maharaj, Shami Brahmananda. So all of a sudden, Maharaj, he confronted Maharaj on the outside. 
in Balaram's house in North Calcutta. Tabu, you are here? Yes, Maharaj. Have you seen what are buffalo? Yes, Maharaj. If a mosquito sits on the, on the horn of a water buffalo, does the water buffalo, buffalo feel? Does, does the buffalo feel the weight of a small mosquito on the, on, the, on the horn? He kept quiet. Then Mara said, I am that water buffalo. You made a little mistakes. That does not bother me. Come to me again. They, they can change their mistakes. They can correct it. They can uplift your life. That is the way we find in Brahmananda how he was a great guru. Swami Shankarananda was my guru, Swami Brahmananda's private secretary. It was in Banaras in 1912. Maharaj expressed at that time, Holy Mother was in Banaras. He was expressing that, you know, we'll have to give some good breakfast to my Holy Mother today. You can make some kind of shop, some kind of fried things, morning. Immediately, the Swami Shankarananda went to the market, bought some cauliflower, sorry, plantain flower called mocha, very delicious thing, and put it. He boiled both, mixed together, and then he was trying to fry those, those chops. He saw it is very mushy. So what he did, he was a very practical person. He took some farina and roasted it, a little browning, and then mixed with that thing and made it strong so that it will not be soggy. It will hold it. Just sometimes you put flour, then it will hold. So he did that, and then fried it, and early in the morning, carried to Swami. Brahmananda, Brahmananda said, good, good, carry this to the mother. Mother was so happy, he offered, she offered that to Sri Ramakrishna, and he ate it, and he praised that how beautifully this monks can cook also. So that is the real sign of a disciple. You must study, you know what is in Guru's mind. And before Guru says anything, do it. Shai Prabhupada told me a story that Brahmananda sent him to bring some railway parcel from Puri. He was then staying in Puri. And the station master said, oh, no, 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 Maharaj is saying, give the slip, I shall carry in the evening. Bas, Maharaj was very upset when he came back, he said, the station master will bring the parcel to you. I asked you to bring and you um, give to the station master. He scolded him right and left. Swami Prabhupada was the age of the Hollywood center. I was with him for five years, 71 to 78. No, 71 to 76. <coughs> then what happened? Swami Turiyananda told, do you know? There are three kinds of disciples. One kind of disciple is the guru will tell you and the disciple will not do it. Disobedient. Second, when guru tells the disciple, disciple does that. They are second class. And the first class, the best, Without Guru does not say anything, with reading Guru's mind, he can do it. Then says, Swami wants you to be the best disciple. Swami Prabhupada used to tell me those stories. Swami Bishuddhananda's, I edited a book, Reminiscence of Brahmananda, nearly 40. 50, 60 monks and devotees reminiscences. He was volume. <coughs> Shami Bishuddhananda told these stories. One day I went with Brahmananda to the Vishwanath Shiva temple and I saw Maharaj 
took the broomstick from the sweeper of the temple and began to sweep the courtiers of the Shiva temple in Banaras. He was the president of the order, spiritual son of Sri Ramakrishna, acting like a sweeper. But you know, when I was doing, I was thinking, how important it is to serve the guru. The joy I got that day, which I cannot get even through meditation, just serving the Lord. One day, Brahmananda told me, told him, let me, let me tell you some secret about your spiritual life. Sharan manan rakho rekho, keep recollectedness about God. What is recollectedness? <coughs> it is in the Upanishad. Ahara shuddhau, satya shuddhi, satya shuddhau, dhruva smriti, smriti lambe sarva granthi nam vipra moksha. Ahar. Ahar means eat. Actual meaning is what you gather through the senses. Don't think you eat only through the mouth. You eat through your eyes, through nose, through ears. Eat means gathering inside. All these things, sound, sight, nerve, smell, taste, all these things we put on in your mind day and night we are doing. That is called ahar. Food. We are feeding the mind continually through the senses. So if all kinds of food are pure, your mind is bound to be pure. No other way. Your eyes are seeing only good things, mind is thinking good things, thoughts, eating. All the sense organs are bringing good stuff to the mind. Mind will automatically be pure. We are feeding the mind all rubbish stuff, impure stuff. That is the reason our mind is impure and restless. It is all about the mind. What are you going to feed your mind? That he was talking about. So when the mind becomes pure, what does it do? Dhruva smriti he. Constant recollectiveness of God. A pure mind only thinks about God. A pure mind does not think worldly things. And if you constantly think about God, what will happen? Vipra moksha, he will be liberated. He will be illumined. That is the way mind works. So Brahman was teaching this monk, this is the way. I do that, you do. So, I mean, Brahmananda could create a spiritual atmosphere. Nirbhananda ji told us. Once there was some kind of disagreement and some kind of faction among the monks in Banaras. Brahmananda, it was in 1921, <clears throat> Brahmananda told Swami Sarudananda, I am coming. Just I am coming. He went there. What did he do? He announced. All monks will have to come and meditate with me in the morning and evening, without exception. Thus, those who are culprits, conspirators, they are scared. They are thinking, Shami Brahmananda will throw us out of the order. He did not do anything. You just come and meditate with me. Do you know what happened? Within a week, those who are, <coughs> he raised their minds in higher plane of consciousness. Those who are problem, created problems, they came and apologized. And there was a perfect harmony in the monastery. He could create a spiritual atmosphere. In that atmosphere, if you come, you will be uplifted. Your mind will go to the higher plane. Always remember, all fights and quarrels in our higher life the cause is ego. I was reading last yesterday, I read a very funny story, but a very important story. I met that Swami, Ramananda Saraswati, in Omkarnath, in Omkarishwar, on the bank of the Narmada in 19, 
96 or 97. What happened? This monk told a story that a, mo a man fell into the well and died there. And the villagers came, but how to, what to do? But somebody says that he's a rotten corpse now, bad odor, just put some perfumed and some rose water. But that water does not go away. But he take the water out, but still water, water does not go away. The problem is that corpse, the dead body. That Swami was giving that lecture. That in the human system, do you know what is that corpse, rotten corpse? Ego. That ego must be out from the body. Then only God will create the divine flavor in your mind. He compared the corpse with that ego. Very interesting way he described, I told you in a brief way, but he told a very elaborate, beautiful story about ego, which is creating all kinds of both bad odor in our system. <laughs> he told Shami Jyoti Sharanandaji, he was a very great monk. You really want peace? Yes. You meditate at midnight, 12 o'clock at night. He followed his guru's advice. Even I remember in 1960s, I used to we, I used to live above him. He was in the first floor, I was in the second floor. We observed that till 12 o'clock there is light in his room. Look, Swami, uh, that Swami died in 1922 and it was 1965-66. Still he is following his guru's advice. Till midnight he will repeat his mantra, then he will go to bed. My guru's order. How these people's lives changed, which is amazing. Then he told, he came to, he first came to Germany. But when the second, during the Second World War, he came to America and started a century in Philadelphia. Then in 50s, he returned to India, in Bangalore. Anyhow, that Swami, became the editor of the Prabhu Dvarata, Prabhu Guru, Swami Brahmananda told him, do you know how to think? Learn to think deeply. Take one thought and deeply stick on that thought. Study your books. Then the thoughts will move. And then every week try to write an article. He was training this monk that he will go to the West one day and then he will be the vice president of the order. Training. That is really, really important when we read these books, this, this Swami's lives. Whole thing is training. Eating food is only it takes few minutes, but how much work can behind cooking that food? It is all preparation. Spiritual life, you must prepare yourself. Then I went, in 1973, I went to Seattle and met Swami, Bibidi Swami, Bibidi Shananda, who was a disciple of Brahmananda. So we are in the shrine together. Then I asked him, Swami, when you were initiated, what kind of instruction you got from your guru? Swami replied, Maharaj told me, puja, part, job, dhan, chattei korbi. How little the spiritual life monotonous have now. Puja, worship, ritual, part, reading, job, repeating mantra, dhyan, meditation. If you practice these four, your spiritual life will not be monotonous. Then I interviewed, I used to interview all the Swamis, who disciples of Swami Brahmananda. I met Swami Bhaswarananda. He was in, in charge of Panaras. Buddha Maharaj, great, great monk. I interviewed him with a tape. I asked Maharaj, what kind of instruction did you get from your guru? The Maharaj, immediately I saw that only, he, within two months he died in 1977, October. His face beamed with joy. Maharaj told me, 
Don't practice too many spiritual disciplines. Practice these two. Saitya, Brahma Church. Truthfulness and celibacy. You are a monk. These two things you practice. That will be enough. Sometimes this Swami was very humorous. I interviewed Swami. Ashe Shanandaji, who was a disciple of mother, but got his Brahmacharya bhav from Swami Brahmananda. So he went to Swami Brahmananda. In our order, if you want to be a monk, it needs nine years. First three years, you work, two years training, then first bhav after five years, then again four years. After nine years, you will be a Swami. So he went for Brahmacharya bhav. Then Swami said, you want bhav? Yes. But you will have to pay me 108 rupees. Well, Maharaj, I am a poor brahmachari, where shall I get money? You work for Swami Sharadananda, who was general secretary of the Ramakrishna order. He has a lot of money. So you ask him and bring money to me. So he came to Sharadananda. Maharaj said this, you will have to give me money, otherwise you will not give me Brahmacharya. Then Swami said, you go back to Swami Brahman and tell him that all money of Sarudananda, all money of the Ramakrishna Vajar belong to you, because you are the president. So again he went to Swami Brahmananda, and Brahmananda said, where is the money? Brahman, Swami Sarudananda said that Sarudananda belongs to you, all Buddha money, Ramakrishna Vajar's money belong to you. Hmm, empty words. You cannot be fool me. Phaka <laughs> kotha. Empty words. Did you bring any written from him? Well, no. Then go back. Again he came back. <laughs> then Brother Sharadananda said, All right, I shall go with you. He went. And you stay outside. He went to Brahman and then talked and said, You will, you will get your vows. <laughs> Sometimes these people, illumined souls, play like the boys. <laughs> he told another Swami Achyudhananda, spiritual life, do not do it haphazardly. Make a routine. Morning this time I must sit. Evening this time I must sit. Make a rigid routine. I used to call it the mystery of time. Do you know what is the mystery of time? You conditioned your stomach, 7 o'clock, breakfast, 1 o'clock, lunch, 7 o'clock, dinner. You will see your stomach will demand food all those three times. It is my breakfast time, it is my lunch time, it is my dinner time. So if you condition your mind that I shall meditate this time, this time, your mind will demand food. You give me meditation. I am hungry. This is the way the spiritual life can be shaped, can be established. Very important. <laughs> then he told him, Sometimes you complain, my mind is restless. Repeat mantra 10 to 20,000 times a day. Your mind will be controlled. He told another monk, pray to the master with a longing heart. <coughs> Open your heart to, that, to, the, to the Lord. Those who are humble, come. The Lord listens to their prayers. The spiritual life begins after Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Very practical person, a young monk broke a magnolia flower from the monastery with a branch so that he can decorate the shrine in the, in the vase in the, in the temple. 
Swami Brahmananda caught him. What is the matter? Do you know? Check the flower and check leaves and put in the vase and arrange it. The branch you broke, it took one year for the tree to grow that one branch. Another flower would come there. Do you know how to pick flowers from the garden? Listen. Do you see all these flowers are blooming? <coughs> Take the flowers which are from the back. The front ones, the big ones, do not touch. And don't take all flowers from one tree. One or two from this tree, one or two from the other tree, in this way. Because the trees are also worshipping the cosmic Lord. Don't make this one tree naked, taking all flowers from the tree. You know, we do not think this way. How to pick flowers? How to worship the Lord? Shami Bijayananda, who was in Argentina, he told this story. Brahma, he, he was very fond of trees. Do you know what? He said that two persons will never betray you, tree and cow. If you plant the trees, you will get fruits and flowers. And the cows will give you milk, cow dung for, man, for fertilizer, manure. These two persons will never betray you. And he asked this Swami Vijayananda that I planted a abum, magnolia tree. You morning, before sunrise, two buckets of water. Evening, after sunset, two buckets of water. He was checking. One afternoon, he went for lecture in Calcutta. The tree did not get the water. Next day, he caught him. You did not put water to the trees. Being a guru, I asked you, and you did not do it. Maharaj, you asked me to give lecture to Calcutta. Why did you not ask someone else to put the flower, to put the water? Maharaj, if this for petty things, one evening I did not give water, these are small things you were scolding me. My son, one day you people will do many great, great, great things. I am here to teach you only small things. If you are perfect in small things, you will be the perfect in big, 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 great things in the world, in your life. I am an old man, I am just trying to teach you how to be perfect. He asked you, Swami Ganesharananda, who was the head of Chicago, died in the 1940s. Hey, I want to see your room, where you sleep. Maharaj, please don't come, give me a little time. And his room was mess. They had all these things. <laughs> Mara said, always keep yourself ready. Your guru or God may come to your place. It should be clean and tidy. An untidy, unclean person cannot be spiritual. <laughs> I knew this person, Amullah Bandhu Mukhubaddai. Mother's disciple. His sister came for a lesson from the Swami. Swami was in the railway station waiting for the train from Moiman Singh to Dhaka. So, what happened? Swami told this young girl, I have no time. The train is coming. I shall give you wisdom in one sentence. Read the Gospel of Ramakrishna every day. You will find all the answers, all question, all the answers of all of your questions. That will be enough for you. I shall. I edited when I was initiated. I was asked to read this book. It is in Bengali. I translated it. I shall read only one entry to you. <coughs> Belurmat, June 1st, 1913. It was Sunday afternoon. Swami Brahmananda was seated with some devotees. One of them asked Maharaj, how can one have yearning for the Lord? Maharaj. Maharaj means Swami Brahmananda. Yearning comes when the mind becomes pure 
through the company of the holy and practicing spiritual disciplines according to instructions of a guru. How can one have peace? Maharaj, by loving God and by having true faith in him, one cannot attain peace in the very beginning. One has to cry with a longing heart and be restless for the vision of God. Then slowly comes peace. When a person does not find any peace through worldly enjoyments and becomes disgusted with them, then he feels attracted to God. The more restless you are, the more you hunger for peace. The more thirsty you are, the more you crave water. If you really want peace, increase your inner restlessness for God. Devotee, how can one have love for God? Maharaj, by meditation, devotional practices, prayer, and so on. Devotee, can a person realize God while living in the world? Maharaj, does anyone live outside the world? Devotee, no, Maharaj, what I mean is this. Is it possible for a household to realize God? Maharaj, then say that. Yes, one can, but with great difficulty. Devotee, should one renounce the world if dispassion arises? Maharaj, yes, one should. That is called renunciation. When true dispassion drones, draws, drones in the heart, it just spreads more and more like a wild forest fire. As Sri Ramakrishna used to say, a fish gets relief and joy when it escapes from the net. It never wants to be trapped again. Similarly, when a person gets rid of the bondage of worldly life, he never wants to be caught again. Devotee, is it possible to realize God without a guru? Maharaj, it seems to me, no. It is not possible to realize God without a guru. It is the guru who points out the path of the chosen deity through a mantra. One may have many upogurus or subsidiary teachers. The real guru instructs, follow these spiritual disciplines and have the company of the holy. Devotee, how can one recognize a perfect guru? Maharaj, one can know if one lives with him for some time. The guru is supposed to observe the life of the disciple. If he sees the disciple has tremendous attachment for worldly enjoyments, which can hardly be controlled, he should not initiate the disciple, but send him back to the world. And if he sees the disciple is endowed with discrimination and dispassion, he should keep the disciple near him and slowly instruct him. Devotee, how can one make the mind one-pointed? Maharaj, the practice of japam and meditation or the means of concentrating the mind. Devotee, Maharaj, what is the meaning of the Vedantic saying Brahman alone is real and the world is unreal? Maharaj, it means that the world we see is apparent and not real. In Samadhi, the world is appears and one experiences uninterrupted bliss similar to the joy one gets after deep sleep. The sages express their experience in Samadhi, saying, Ananda, Ananda, only bliss, bliss. Maharaj, Jabhuji, Maharaj, what is the proof of God's existence? Maharaj, the seers have said, we have seen God, and if you follow this way, you will also see him. The master used to say, merely by seeing hemp, hemp, you will not be intoxicated. You must procure hemp, prepare it, take it, and then wait a little while. Gradually you will be intoxicated. Merely by saying, God, God, you will not realize him. Practice disciplines and then wait for his grace. You will see him in time. Jebuchi, Maharaj, sometimes while practicing japa mind magic and mind becomes blank, what causes that? Maharaj, Patanjali, the author of Yoga Sutra, mentioned this as an obstacle to yoga. Meditation, is an uninterrupted flow of thought toward God. When meditation ripens, the vision of God comes, and then comes samadhi. The current of bliss continues for a long time after samadhi. Some say it continues, now continues throughout one's life. Anyhow, it is a very beautiful book, very practical teachings of spiritual life. Thank you.
बंधुष्य सखा तुम विद्या द्रविण तमेवी सर्व मम दीव दीव लोड युअर मै मदर युअर मै फादर युअर मै फ्रेंड युअर मै कंपेनियन यू आर माई वेल्थ यू आर माई लर्निंग यू आर माई ऑल इन ऑल ओ लोड ओम शांति 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 पीस 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 बेंटूल